What's going on YouTube? This is the Common Sense Professor and today we are going to be looking at analog signals and specifically analog signals coming into and out of our PLC and how to set those up. So before we get started I just want to take a little moment to talk about what an analog signal is. So this is a basically a, a basic definition. So we've been looking at discrete signals which are either off or on. So you're looking at a limit switch, a proc switch, float switch, any anything with the, the word switch after it is off or on, zero or one, high or low. What we're going to be looking into now is analog signals. And analog signals are constantly changing and they represent a percentage of the range that's being measured. So some of the common analog signals that we use in PLCs are 0 to 5 volts DC, 0 to 10 volts DC, and 4 to 20 milliamps DC. Now this is in America. I've seen some videos from European countries and, and maybe in Canada that, that this varies just a little bit, but in America these are common analog signals. Now I've also seen some older systems that use different signals as well, but pretty much any industry nowadays is standardized on these three signals. My experience is that a lot of industry has standardized on 0 to 10 volts DC or 4 to 20 milliamps DC. Now remember, these signals represent what we are measuring. So just to give you an idea, you might have a temperature transmitter that's outputting 4 to 20 milliamps, and that transmitter can be set up to read 0 to 350 degrees Celsius, for instance. Well, 4 milliamps would equal your 0 degrees, 20 milliamps would equal your 350 degrees Celsius, and any percentage within that range is represented by this signal. The same is true for all three of these. These represent your input signal and just like your DC inputs can be anything like a limit switch, a proc switch, a float switch, the PLC doesn't care, it's just looking for a higher or low voltage. The same is true for these analog signals. You have to actually tell the PLC which analog signal that you'll be using, but it doesn't care if a 4 to 20 milliamp signal represents pressure, 0 to 1000 psi, or 0 to 10 inches of water. It doesn't care if that 4 to 20 milliamps represents a temperature transmitter. All it knows is that 4 to 20 milliamps, 0 to 10 volts, equals 0 to 100%. Now I'm actually going to use a PLC that's found in our lab, and I've already added a couple of cards, our analog input and output cards. So our analog input card is an IF8 and our analog output card is an OF8. Both of these are eight channel cards and we have to set up, we have to tell the PLC exactly what the signal is coming into these cards. And each channel can be a different signal. So I could have 0 to 5 volts coming in the channel 0, I could have 0 to 10 volts coming in the channel 1, and I can have 4 to 20 milliamps coming in the channel 2. We have to know what signal's coming in, and then we set our cards up accordingly. So let's start with the IF8 here. If you right-click, go to Properties, it brings up this page here. It's already got my revision. One thing to keep in mind here is, remember I told you this was an eight-channel card, but look over here, we've only got four channels. That's because our input data is set on differential data. If you've got an eight-channel card and you've only got four channels, you're probably looking at differential. We don't need differential. We're gonna change that to single-ended. So you click on Change, go to Input Data, and we want to select single ended data and then hit OK. We should see this change to eight channels. We're just going to look at channel five because on this particular PLC, I know I've got zero to 10 volts coming in on channel five. So I'm going to click channel five and it brings up this screen here. The first thing that it wants to know is it wants to know what my signal is and it set zero to 20 milliamps. I want to change that to volts and then I'm going to change this 0 to 10 volts. Now the next thing we're going to look at is our scaling. This is extremely handy because if you've done any type of programming in older PLCs, you know what it's like to have to scale your own numbers. Well this does it for us here, which is really nice. So our low signal is 0 volts, that's correct. Our high signal is going to be 10 volts. So I'm going to change this to 10. It allows us to add units. This used to be unitless. This is new for Studio 5000. I'm just going to keep this unitless and you can scale this 0 to 100 or 0 to 10. I generally do 0 to 10 because I've actually had issues when I'm scaling 0 to 100 sometimes. It actually does the math wrong for scaling and 0 to 10 seems to always work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just scale this 0 to 10 volts and then my engineering units are going to be 0 to 10 volts inside my program. Once I have this set up, I can hit apply. Now my channel 5 is set up. We also have an option of alarms. So if we click on the alarm screen, you're going to see we've got 
high high alarm, high alarm, low alarm, and the low low alarm, and we've got a dead band. So let's just say that we want to alarm at 9 and then have a high alarm at 8, a low alarm at 2, and a low low alarm at 1. I'm going to hit apply there and I'm going to hit OK. Remember this because we're going to look at this later on in our program. I'll actually pull some of these in and we can actually watch it watch it operate. Now back to our program I want to introduce you all to one instruction that's extremely easy to use but we use it all the time in industry. So let's say that you're looking at a tank level and you have a 0 to 10 volt level transmitter inputting into your PLC and you want a local gauge for an operator to be able to see the level. Well what you would do in this case is you would come over here under the move logic and you select your first instruction here which is a move block. All this move block does is move from one source to a destination. Now you have to be sure that your data type matches. So for our analog data type, we're going to be using the real data type. And you need to be sure that your destination is going to be the real data type as well. One thing that we also need to do before we push this to our analog output is we need to set up our analog output as well. So we're going to set this up the same way. We're going to right click analog output, go to properties, but we're going to be sending this to channel zero. So we come in here, channel zero, and we want to change that to voltage, have the option of zero to 10 or, or zero to five. It's automatically negative 10 to positive 10. And then we're going to come over here and you need to also make sure that your scaling matches. So we're going to change that zero to 10 volts, and then we'll change this to 10 volts. Then we hit apply. Now, whenever we have five volts coming into our move block, we're going to send that five volts to our destination to go to a local gauge. So here's how you do this. You just double click your source, choose your down arrow. Now for some reason Alan Bradley decided to use our real data that we're going to be using for this at the very end of our input. So whenever we click on three, which is our analog input, to choose our channel five, the first thing that comes up is our faults. You notice that these are Boolean data types. The easiest way to find your data types is to scroll until you find your reels. So you're going to scroll through all those alarm bits that we looked at at the very beginning and you keep scrolling and keep scrolling and keep scrolling and eventually you're going to see reel. So this starts our analog reel numbers. So that's channel 0. We need channel 5 because that's the one that we have set up. and We just double click that. Now we're going to be moving our analog input from channel 5 to our analog output channel 0. So our output is 4 and our output cards are set up much better because your data comes up first thing, your real data. So we just check channel 0. Now whatever that is, whatever value And when we download this, whatever value is on channel 5 will automatically be sent to channel 0 of our output. So you can see here I've got 3.4 volts which automatically gets pushed to my output here. So we can look at that in controller tags, look at our 4 output, and there's our 3.4 bolts there. So that's what a move function does. You can use move functions for a lot more things and we're going to look at other things in the future but right now as far as analog goes just understand that this is how we push an input to an output. Now there's other ways we can do this too. If we do math or any function like that we can also look at a couple other things. So let me show you a different ways that we can alarm. First off we can use those internal alarms for a low, low, low and high. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select channel 5, but we're going to select the alarm bits for that. We scroll down through our faults. So here we go. Here's channel 5. There's our faults. We keep going. There's our low alarm, our high alarm, low, low alarm. So I'm going to choose a low, low alarm here, and I'll just have this turn on a light. We're going to choose a low alarm here. We'll choose the high alarm here. Then we'll choose our high, high alarm.
So as I move this signal, watch as it steps through and it's going to turn these lights on as it steps through the percentages that we set up inside the card. Now, I could not get the voltage to go below 1.25. We're going to set this up to where we're going to have the same outcome, but use compare blocks. So I can show you another way that you can establish these alarms inside your programs. So I'm going to go offline for a second. I want to keep my lights, but I'm going to delete these bits. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and use compare blocks. So for my low, low alarm, I'm going to say if it's less than 2, I want my low alarm to come on. I'm going to change that because of my analog signal that I've got. Now when it's between 3 and 2, I want my light 2 or my low alarm to come on. So in this case, I'm going to use a limit block. My test is my analog signal, but I'm going to set my low limit at 2 and I'm going to set my high limit at 3 for this particular one. I'm going to do the same thing for my high alarm. I'm going to use a limit. I'm going to look at my test as my analog signal. But for this one, I'm going to go between 8 and 9 for my high alarm. And then for my high, high alarm, I'm going to say my analog signal is greater than 9. I'm going to turn on this light. Now I want to make something clear. You can use less than or less than or equal to or greater than or greater than equal to because an actual equal to compare block is almost useless in analog signals. Because as you saw, my signal was hardly ever 2, right? It was like 1.8935 whatever. It's a long number. And so it doesn't matter if you use less than or equal to or less than, it's going to give you the same results. So I'm going to step through this and we're going to watch this work and see if we can see a difference between the two, whether I'm using the alarm bits or I'm using compare blocks. Okay, did you notice how this sequenced through the lights the exact same way? I actually prefer this because if you were programming this and I came in behind you, I can tell what's going on here. And obviously you can label the rungs by comments to explain what each rung is doing. But to me, this is easier to see to determine what's going on inside the program. All right, so I hope this has helped you with our analog signals. We're going to be building on this in future projects, but I hope this will make a good reference for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.